All right, Canon, I love your autofocus, but it's not the main reason why I use your cameras. Mainly, it's because of two things. One, it's ease of use. And by ease of use, I basically mean because I have Canon glass and I've used Canon cameras for the past like 10 years. And the second thing is because of its reliability, right? I, again, I've used Canon cameras for the past 10 years. I've never really had a problem with it. Yes, there's limitations to them, but usually you find out what those limitations are from the get-go. And as long as you work within those limitations, nothing really unpredictable really happens to the camera. Everything just works as it should. Canon cameras are considered to be workhorse cameras. There's a reason for that. But recently with my experience with this Canon R6, that reliability aspect, it's a little bit questionable. Recently, I've been experiencing some overheating on my Canon R6. And I'm not talking about 4K overheating, that is well known and well documented. I'm talking about 1080p overheating. And get this, 1080p, 30 frames per second in IPB light. IPB light, the smallest codec on this camera. It's causing some issues. Here are the official Canon data rates from the R6 spec sheets. If you're shooting IPB with log turned on, it's 45 megabits per second. With log turned off, it's 30 megabits per second. And when you're shooting IPB light with log turned on, it's 28 megabits per second. And with log turned off, it's 12 megabits per second. So this camera, or at least my camera, overheats shooting 12 megabits per second. <sighs> Take a look. All right, so here I am showing you that I'm using an official Canon LPE6 NH battery, and this battery was fully charged, not right before recording. This was charged way before, so the battery was not hot. Uh, this is a SanDisk V30 170 megabits per second uh, card. I'm only using one card in this test, so it's not dual recording. Yeah, just turning the camera on, and uh, I have focus here. So you can see that the record time currently is normal at 29 minutes and 59 seconds. And I'm shooting it at 1080p, 30 frames per second in IPB light. All right, starting the recording and I'm just gonna start the timer on the phone and here we go. So after 30 minutes, uh, the recording stopped, obviously. Uh, I was not, I was away from the camera, so I didn't notice it until a few minutes later. Came back and I noticed that the record time dropped to 20 minutes from 30 minutes. So clearly we are already seeing signs of overheating. So starting the next recording. So around the 51 to 52 minute mark, we see that the overheat indicator light is starting to flash. And finally, at the 54 minute, 50 second mark, give or take, the camera overheated and shut down, giving me a total of two clips. The first clip, 29 minutes and 59 seconds, and the second clip lasting for 22 minutes and 33 seconds. All in all, under one hour. 
Shocking, right? <laughs> At least I was pretty shocked. So I've actually ran this test multiple times using different batteries, different memory cards, and, and I know V30 is not the fastest memory card out there in the world, but I think it should be able to handle 1080p, 12 megabits per second, just fine. <laughs> Um, I've also used uh, a dummy battery with this camera. I've ran it using a dummy battery and the camera acting as a webcam as well. So it was plugged into the computer via USB-C and the camera was not recording at all. It was just on, acting as a webcam, and it was still overheating in all of these tests at around the 55 minute to one hour mark, give or take. The real kicker here is I've actually told Canon about this and I've sent them my camera to inspect and about Two and a half weeks later, I got the camera back with a note saying, no fault found. There you go. No fault determined. And the first thing I, focus. And the first thing I did when I got the camera back was I took it out of the box and I ran that test that you guys just saw. And lo and behold, it overheated. So I was like, how is it possible that Canon wasn't able to find an overheating issue on this camera? So I sent them that video and the next day I got a call from them saying, look, it's actually normal. It's actually normal? Yes, depending on different shooting conditions, the camera may or may not overheat even shooting in 1080p. Well, what kind of shooting conditions? I mean, it's not that hot here. I, I live in Canada. Outside right now it's 10, 11 degrees, give or take. Inside is about 21 to 23 degrees. It's not that hot. It's a pretty normal shooting condition. Well, he didn't really have a straight answer, basically different variables. There's too many variables for him to give me a straight answer in terms of the shooting conditions. Okay, well, I mean, I I've previously used Canon cameras before. I've had the 5D Mark IV, I've had the Canon 60, and that camera is like a 10-year-old camera. And those cameras never overheated shooting long format content in 1080p. And they didn't even have IPP light in them. And he says, well, those cameras were designed with a bigger body, and so therefore it's able to dissipate heat a lot better. Well, that makes sense. But then if you look on Google, if you look on Reddit, if you go and look on YouTube, nobody has ever experienced any overheating shooting 1080p with the Canon R6. Everybody basically says this camera does not overheat in 1080p. He said, well, I mean, those are mainly user experiences and reviewer experiences. Canon never officially said anything about this camera overheating or not in 1080p. And he's right, because if you look on the Canon R6 spec sheet, they mention 4K overheating, but they never mention anything about 1080p overheating. Well, I just assumed that they didn't mention it because it doesn't overheat, but apparently, no, 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 that's not the case. It may overheat, and Canon's just not telling you about it. So he basically went on and told me different solutions to potentially solve this issue. One is don't plug the camera via USB-C into the computer because apparently the camera processes a lot of information when you do that. That's fine, I don't usually do that very often. I was just trying different scenarios to see if it overheats. And the other thing was he said, if you want to do long format recording, you can try plugging this camera uh, via HDMI into an external recorder. It's 2022. I shouldn't have to plug this camera into an external recorder if I want to shoot long format content in the lowest quality setting, 1080p IPB light. I'm okay with the lowest quality. I shouldn't have to plug this into an external recorder to get more than one hour of recording time out of this. That is unbelievable. If I have to rig this camera up for that scenario, I I'm gonna choose a different camera. So yeah, at this point, I really don't know what to do because I've sent them my camera, I've shown them my tests, and Canon doesn't seem to think this is an issue. So uh, my takeaway from this is basically the reliability that I mentioned earlier for Canon cameras. It's questionable now because, you know, it seems like the R6, the quality, the performance of the R6 is kind of all over the map out there. Or the other alternative is everybody else out there lives in the Arctic and I live on the desert because there's no way everybody else is getting unlimited recording and I'm getting overheating within the hour. I mean, the discrepancy can't be that large. It's just, it's just too hard to believe. I guess my takeaway from this is that uh, this R6 isn't really the camera to get when you wanna shoot video. For photos, it's fantastic. You know, the, the images from it is amazing. The burst rate is, is incredible, the, the low noise on it is fantastic, but if you want to shoot video, not really the camera to get. 
I mean, I know this camera was never really marketed as a video camera to begin with, but I feel like, come on, nowadays, you know, every hybrid camera should be able to do both relatively well. And I'm not really asking for this camera to do a lot. I'm just asking for it to do 1080p in the lowest quality codec. And it's still not able to provide that for me. So there you go. Uh, but I'm curious what you guys think. Do you guys think my camera is a lemon? Because Canon doesn't seem to think so. Um, or perhaps I'm doing something wrong with my test, you know, because I'm not perfect. I'm not a genius. If I'm doing something wrong, please let me know. And if you have a solution for me, please let me know as well, because I really want to get this fixed. But um, yeah, thank you so much for listening to my rant. Uh, I have to go because my camera is overheating. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.